Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC, and I am here with Mr. Mac Laskowski. What's going on? What's going on? I never knew we if you're going to do the elbow the, or the... It's the forearm. It's See? The, dude, it's... it's forearm's the forearm? that. What's right, up, man? man. How, you, how you doing? It's been a long time. Damn kids. I'm not supposed to keep up with you and your your traditions. Whippersnapper. <laughs> anyway. I'm doing uh, good, man. How you doing? Good. Doing okay. Doing okay. We got a cool little show for you. That's right. Tippity tip. All over the place. We've did got you just say tippity things. tip? Tippity tip. Oh, he did. Chickity chip. <laughs> Hey, one of our sponsors today, KelbyTraining.com. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, make sure you go to KelbyTraining.com. We got a ton of classes there. You'll always see little tips um, and techniques from people that we have that are special guests on the show here. Generally, they are all on KelbyTraining.com, so we would love it if you would stop by the website and uh, and take a look. There's a little free video on the homepage that you can watch, and it gives you, I think, a really good uh, kind of a really good uh, feeling for what's on the website. So. I usually tell people that if you like what we do here on the on D-Town, and you're like, oh my God, I wish we could have more <laughs> of it. Those guys are way better than us. <laughs> Those guys are gonna rock. You can actually watch all of this stuff. You can watch hours and hours and hours of classes right on KBTrading.com. Make sure you take a look at that. Also, make sure you take a look at Photoshop World. PhotoshopWorld.com, September 5th through 7th at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. Make sure that you're a part of it. Last couple of days, right for an early bird special, you can save $100. Days early bird. I know it sounds weird. It's called Photoshop World. And you're thinking, well, I'm watching D-Town Photography. Trust me, it, it, it really should be called Photoshop Photography Lighting World because that's what it is. I'd say it's about a third of each. You know, yeah. there's a third photography classes, a third lighting classes, and a third of Photoshop classes. So we'd love it if you could join us. PhotoshopWorld.com. Now, one of the people that I happen to be really, really excited about these days is Mr. Peter Hurley. Peter's got some great stuff about relationship and tips for making a really, really good image by just making sure that you keep that connection. Take a look at what Peter has to say for this. Hey everybody, RC here. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm really, really excited about this guest here. Uh, particularly excited because of a couple of different things. I'll tell you about those things in a little bit, but I'm here with Famous photographer, New York photographer, Mr. Peter Hurley. Peter, what's going hey, on, man? RC, thanks for having me, man. How good you doing, doing, man? It's awesome. I'm it's good to be down here, dude. I'm glad to see you in Florida. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, you can do some nice weather, a little beach action. Actually, no, it's more. It's so laid back compared to New York. New York, I'm running around like a maniac. Here, I hung out all day yesterday. I'm like, oh, yeah, amazing. it's a, it's a good thing, dude. But anyway, let me not overly domineer this thing. I'll tell you, I'm a big fan. All right. But for those who don't know who you are, tell them a little bit about what it is that you do. Uh, I'm, my name's Peter Hurley, and I'm a headshot photographer in New York. And I started doing headshots about 10 years ago. I actually consider myself a portrait photographer these days, but it was mm -hmm. headshots for a really long time. Uh, I shoot, generally shoot my headshots on a white background, and it kind of took off, and I opened a studio in LA, and I go back and forth between the two. And, um, and that's, I mean, and, yeah. and that's pretty much it. It's like. I was talking to a buddy of mine who's an actor in New York, and he's like, Peter Hurley's the guy that you go to in New York. He's like, that's who you go to. You go visit Peter Hurley when you need that stuff. And one of the things that, that I knew that part, but then recently there was something that was done over at F-Stoppers where they were talking about the art of the headshot. Yeah. Now, you worked with them on, on doing some video for that? What happened, or? well, Lee and Patrick, they, they uh -huh. con well, Lee, contact the funny story real quick, where Lee contacted me when he was a student in college and he emailed me and he said, you were the only, one of the only photographers to email me back. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So he emailed me when he had started F-Stoppers and he said, we wanna do a little video on you. And I was like very secreted for years about how I did my headshots, what went on, what it looked like. So, but I was like, you know what? These guys are cool. Let them come in. They came in. The video went out, uh, and it just got just a huge blew response. Blew up, bang! <laughs> and I was like, shabang! <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, uh, I just thought. Wow, this is cool. I was like, maybe I'll get into you know giving away, teaching a little bit. I've been doing it ten years since about time I gave away, gave something back. I feel really fortunate. I picked up a camera. So hey, if people are taking better pictures because the information I'm given, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and and that's the thing. It's it's like a lot of the times when people think of headshots, I, and 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 I, it's very personal to me because I like portraiture. I like environmental portraiture when I'm working with that stuff. A lot of people think you know. 
Oh, the, the tilt to the side. But there's actually a lot more to that stuff, and that was one of the things that I'll give you a lot of credit for. When you were looking at that, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, this guy's dropping a lot of knowledge on this. I'm like, it's just like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So I was really, really happy about that. Um, so it is an art form, and you are an artist to that. Yeah. So I think that that's really, really cool. Thank you. Now, uh, Peter's going to be doing some other tips for us here, but you have one tip for us, just a very basic tip on communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my thing is really, it's all based on the interaction between the, you know, the subject and the photographer. We create the atmosphere. We're the ones getting them to do whatever it is that they're going to do. I always say you could have the best lights, best camera, best makeup artist, best of everything. If you don't have a reaction coming out of your, your who you're shooting, you have nothing. You don't have a shot. So that rapport that you're building is what it's all about. That's what you guys are working on. That's what I want you to work on. And that's what I worked on for the last 10 years to figure out how to suck the life out of these people, make sure that the photo pops. So I've been teaching these workshops and um, a lot of the DSL shooters, I notice, I notice this happening. Whenever you have somebody in front of your camera, you have to, under, you have to think about what they're doing while you're doing all your technical stuff. Let's say you get them in front of your camera, you shoot a shot at them, right? What are they doing when you look down at your camera and you're trying to figure out your settings? What do you think they're doing? You know? Probably cool stuff. They're just standing there going like this. Is it good? What, what is, does he know what he's doing? No, I mean, so what, what happens a lot at my workshops is that the, the, the photographer actually looks down, looks up, shoots a picture, looks down, looks up, shoots a picture, and you're losing the interaction and you're losing the rapport with mm -hmm. your, your subject that you're shooting every single time. Mm -hmm. and every time. And that's one of those things where it's like, it, it's, it's a level of trust. Yeah. And it's like you have this relationship and you're working with this. And, and you need to... If you stop, start that relationship, how, how good are your pictures actually going to be? Right. So I thought that that was a, a, invaluable, where, where we need to add, we need to stop looking. Yeah. We need to trust that we did our stuff. Treat it as a Polaroid, you know? That's a good one. That's what I do. I That's mean, I started with film. I had a Polaroid. You know, the Polaroid takes two minutes. You whip it out. You got the Polaroid there. You wait. You open it. You go, oh, looks good. Okay, let's roll. Boom. Treat it as a Polaroid. Use it so that you look and you see what you know what you're doing. Make your adjustments. Once your adjustments are made, you're done. Look through the camera and see. Make sure your eye is capturing what it is these people are doing the moment you press the trigger, the shutter. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. I like trigger. Trigger's good. Trigger's good. Either. But, but see, okay. it's the communication. It's, all, right. it's all about the communication. Now, anyway, there's tons of information. That's just one nugget of a whole bunch of different things. If more people want to follow that stuff, you can go to peterhurley.com, take a look at the site. He's got some great stuff there. And I'm sure you'll be seeing more of Mr. Peter Hurley. Hey, hey. good to have you here, man. Thanks, RC. All right. I got to tell you, it's, abs it's always a good time to hang out and just talk to Peter Hurley. So, and I think a little known fact about Peter is, you see that hair that he had, the, the sideshow <laughs> bob hair? It is gone. In fact, last night, because RC and I both watched it, last <laughs> night he was on a Google Plus hangout and, uh, and he had his daughter shave his head. I thought it was funny. True story. He, like, yeah. it actually started right down the middle. Right down, yeah. He shaved one side of his head, he put it on a comb over. Matter of fact, what we'll do is, um, in the show notes, we'll go ahead and we'll plug We'll go ahead and link to that because I thought that was really, really cool. Like they yeah. totally look like they're having a good time. But before we do any of that stuff, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about Kelly training, but I want to talk about what you have to say. I got a your, tip. Your little tip. So cool. stick around. We'll be right back. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue à Paris. Poulet, bon fruit et jambon. La donne, la terre, la pillée. Je suis fatigué. Vous voulez manger la fromage. La voiture, elle pour rapide, cloque monsieur. Monsieur Beaujolais, avec fâche. Je suis fatigué. Vraiment, j'ai la fromage. La voiture est pour la rapide, cloque monsieur. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Au revoir. La fromage.
Hey, we are back with D-Town TV. My name is Matt Kleskowski oh. and RC Concepcion. What's going on? Sorry, I stole your... No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. But one of the things that we just wanted to say really, real quick, I know that you mentioned it earlier, KelbyTraining.com. If you like these kinds of tips, tricks, techniques, all of the stuff we're talking about, you can see all of this stuff right inside of KelbyTraining.com. That is the source for all things yeah. photography. Which, by the way, the, the, the ad that just ran was Scott's travel class, mm -hmm. and it's been getting crazy crazy phenomenal reviews so mm -hmm. I mean people are saying that it's changed their their travel photography in ways that they never imagined so yeah I think it's I think great definitely class. something to check out now uh, you have a tip I got a tip really quick tip so uh, uh, you know it's funny because if, if people watch the shows they notice like we go through phases of being into something lately I'm, I'm into long exposure photography and uh, and, and so I bought a, uh, a Lee big stopper mm -hmm. is a 10 stop neutral density filter. 10 stops. See how dark this thing? Hold on. You really can't tell how dark this thing is. So you're going to see just how dark this thing. You got to go back to this camera. All right, here, go back to the camera with a That's it. Well, you got to get out of the way when you do that. Well, okay, hold on here. Hey, look. Go. There's a normal scene. There's a normal scene. That's Done. the 10 stop. All right. I that, knew so that they were going to get It is dark. Two. It's dark. So anyway, ah. here, here's, here, yeah, and it's a hundred and sixty dollar piece of glass, so don't drop it. Anyway, here's the tip. Um, so what happens is when you put this on, you'll never be able to focus, right? Because you, you can't you can't see through 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 the viewfinder. So you're never going to be able to focus. Um, Lee makes a really good system that it's incredibly easy to slide in and slide out, so you don't have to screw and unscrew a filter. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad way to change focus if you need to, but a lot of cameras, and here's the tip, a lot of cameras will let you focus when you have a neutral density filter on if you switch into live view. Mm -hmm. So you go into the video mode on your camera, you'd be surprised. If you look through the viewfinder, you'll see nothing. Go into live view mode on your camera, and you'll, it'll still be dark, but you should be able to focus. So it, 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 all cameras are different, give it a try, but if you're using a neutral density filter and a, a, you know, a 10 stop or even a three stop, sometimes it's hard to, to focus. If you're wanting to do that, give Live View a try and it might help you from taking uh, excuse me, it might help you from taking that filter on and off. Can I, can I give a little bonus tip on top of that because I just sure. thought of it? All right, so this is your thing. Now, this is probably comes into the, I'm sure you've thought about it already, but look, this is pretty much, it slides in there and it's pretty snug. And you'll look at the Lee set, it actually has rivets for you to put more than one. So you could stack mm -hmm. on top of one another. But keep this in mind though, that is not permanently, permanently fixed. So when you put it on your lens, do not put it in this direction so, yeah. so that it slides down. Make sure that it's sideways. The best way to do it is make sure that you know that this is either down or up. Yep. They recommend that you put this little nubby down. Then you can just go ahead and clip it, but that way, it doesn't. It goes sideways. It doesn't go up and down. Yep. It doesn't fall out. So, that's pretty cool. I like that, dude. I love. I love the big stopper. I love my big stopper. You now, know what? The, so, the, I, we're we're gonna beat this to death. What, if you're wondering why you would use a big stopper, it gives you it gives you a long exposure. It lets you get a longer exposure. And if you're out there shooting landscapes and things like that, it adds it adds motion to a static scene, because it blurs the clouds a little bit, it'll blur the water a little bit, and, and that's why I've been kind of digging it lately. It's just kind of a, a different take on, on something I've been shooting for a while. Nice. Now, right. hey, we got another tip from Annie Cahill. Annie is gonna tell us a little bit about models getting comfortable in a camera. Take a look at this. Hey guys, Larry Becker here, and I'm here with Annie Cahill, and she is with Adorama, the professional markets director, am I right? You're right. Okay, and in that position, well, you, you've got a huge background in the, all the details and all the nitty-gritty with cameras and we were talking a little bit about one of the common problems that people have and that is posing their subjects. Um, yeah I get asked a lot of questions you know obviously certainly that I'm in the store now but um, most recently because of graduations right. uh, and also I have a family member who got engaged and we're gonna be shooting her wedding I realized that people have a lot of problems posing mm -hmm. couples, so I thought that would be a good tip to share, uh, just with some, you know, ideas and common problems and, and hopefully some solutions. And you were showing some of the uh, some of the examples uh, earlier when we were talking about mm -hmm. it. Um, one person is tall and one is not, and then uh, so beyond that, they also don't know how to necessarily interact with one another for yeah. the camera. So when somebody's tall and somebody else is short, what do you? What's your first approach? 
Sure. Well, the first thing is that I think people forget that you can't take control over a situation. Everyone says, you know, you only have five minutes to take a shot and you feel pressured, but oftentimes you really can just stop right. and look around. Look around for a better environment. And if someone is much taller, immediately you say, okay, I have to get this couple sitting down. And that happened to me. You know, the, um, the, the, the male, the, the guy was much taller. So mm -hmm. I knew I had to get them both, you know, sitting down. So I looked around for a better place for them to be more proportional. Now, if someone is, is you know, a lot taller, then you may have to find some cushions or again, get them to a better height. So when they have their faces next to each other, it's just a much nicer position and they're more sure. comfortable. Now, one of the other things is um, I noticed that the way they interact sometimes is comfortable for them, but then sometimes they're uncomfortable. They don't know mm -hmm. how to pose. And you said take control. What do you tell them to do? How do you, what kinds of language do you use to, to get people to do the things you want them to do for the camera? Well, first off, if it's a couple, uh, you know, um, that's obviously much easier. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to get them to relax. Uh, a lot of times you just you try to have fun. You know, I always start off with, you know, say if, if they can get much closer and put their arms around each other. And right. then usually people will start giggling and immediately it just causes them to relax. And then it's much easier to go from there. And then I kind of get more serious and then really look at the lighting. Look to see if, if someone is leaning in, is there a shadow, say, on someone's face? That can right. be a very tricky thing to sort out. And then I, then I think of, all right, maybe I have to fill that shadow. So then once they feel relaxed, I watch their body language. Then it's much easier to then turn my attention to the lighting. Okay. And then you also mentioned one other thing um, when we were talking earlier, and that is I never think to show the images I've just shot yeah. to my subjects. I, I kind of want to keep that to myself. But you do, and why? Well, actually, it just happened to me recently is that I had someone who was very self-conscious about his smile. And what I did was I really try to help him relax. And often what I do too is we talked about this is I have someone close their eyes, especially if I feel that they're tense. I have them close their eyes for just a few seconds and then open them up and then I'm ready to take a fast series you know, of pictures and generally they're more relaxed. Mm -hmm. But I think what's important is if someone is self-conscious is to try to take a few good pictures and then show it to them. And then they, then they just again relax and think, okay, I really can take a good picture. Right. And then generally from there, things are just, you know, uphill. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Annie, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Happy to. I, I enjoy this time and learning from you. And I always, always pick up something new from you. I learned my whole camera from you. Oh, so well, thank you very much. Thanks very for much inviting for stopping me. with us. We got to head back to the studio now, but uh, we've got more with Annie too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I gotta tell you, I, 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 were, I was watching the same video you guys were. The funny moment in there was when Annie said, you know, you put, they put their arm back and they lean in and to see Larry go. <laughs> you gotta go back and rewatch it. Because I was like, whoa, you're married to Joe. I'm not, no. <laughs> that was out of deference and respect to Joe. It was just like, dude, that's me and Annie's wife. But anyway, let's okay. take a quick break. When we come back, we've got a contest, we've got a website for you to watch, and you can watch for next week. See you in a bit.
I can't wait to do this again. Welcome back, everybody. Now, what I was saying, because it's one of those, it's one of those tapings. <laughs> what to say for next week? Oh, like, oh yeah, we said that, good. and I'm like, um, I don't even know what I said when I throw a still break. Sorry, dude. I was still thinking about the Larry thing because <laughs> I said, I'm like, what did you just say? He goes, and I don't know. Anyway. I have no idea. But anyway, contest time. What are they gonna win, Matt? You're gonna win on one focal point. On one. On one perfect layers. Nice. And a book from Chris, oh, I love this book. Chris Orwig's People Pictures. So Chris is a great guy, incredible writer, incredible teacher. So Thank you uh, very, very much. Like that one. Press for that and on one software. This is what you're going to do to win. Go to the KelbyTV.com website, KelbyTV.com forward slash D-Town. Find this episode. I think that this episode is 123, if I'm not mistaken. I'll go ahead and I'll get you the exact episode in a second. But... 124. Okay, so make sure you look for episode 124 on D-Town TV. So KelbyTV.com, D-Town TV. Guys, you could be watching this on YouTube. You could be watching this on Facebook, even on Vimeo, on Blip, on the Kelby TV site. There's only one spot where you can actually enter to win. That's the place to do it. KelbyTV.com forward slash D-Town TV. Episode 124. Leave a comment. Leave a tip. Leave yep. anything. One of you guys is going to be able to win this. Thank you so much for stopping by. Matt, this is how I do fast. We got we got a photographer. Oh, we got I a forgot photographer. the photographer. Oh, Julian yeah, Calverly. <laughs> Julian Calverly. So uh, our C our C called this best. Uh, Scott Kelby showed us um, his his website the other day, um, and I think you got to go to like blog. Yeah, yeah. Look at look at some of that. So Scott was showing me uh, showing both of us the website the other day. Awesome stuff. Beautiful work. But our C called the best. He's the Irish Joel Grimes. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, because a lot of this work is composited, and but it, I think it's beautiful. But I, you know, I love the backgrounds. I love the people. He's got great it. work. It, it is. It, it just he, it's like the Irish Joel Grimes because you got great people and great backgrounds, and you put them together. Very cool stuff. Beautiful work. Now beautiful you can do work. quick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next week, we're going to be talking about that thing over there. You see that? You see that over there? We're going to be talking about that thing over there and why it's important to you. Stick around. Thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next week. Forearms.